Let's see television campaign where in Armenia starts work. Now let's see what news do we have for today. Baku listed Artsakh's monuments and destroys them one by one. Rafi Kortoshan. Perhaps one day Armenians from Artsakh will continue what they started in Artsakh. A mosque will be in the place of St. Ambarsum Church in Berzor. Sons of Western Armenia, Udi Rand Kenkulian. Turkish books teach wrong history to students, denying the genocide committed against different nations. Now we are preparing reports regarding the rights of return of Artsakh citizens to present to international courts. Anahit Haratunyan. Mother Divinity, Mariam from Anahit. In 2023, on September 19, when Baku started the war against the Republic of Artsakh, forcibly relocated Armenians of Artsakh under the threat of genocide, then gradually began to destroy historical and cultural monuments of Artsakh. Azerbaijan intends to erase the Armenian trace from Artsakh by 2020, right after the 44-day Artsakh war. Several episodes are already known when the Azerbaijan side completely destroyed Armenian monuments, including churches, including the Church of St. Hambartsum in Berzor, St. Hovannes or Green Hour Church in Shushi, memorials dedicated to the heroes of Artsakh war, as well as the churches of Aterk and Getavan, Hadrut, Charektar and others. Baku's current target is the monument We and Our Mountains, established in the Panagert in 1967, known to all as Grandma and Grandpa. The Monument Watch website reported the other day that Azerbaijan has begun the process of appropriating the monument. According to Monument Watch website, Culture of Azerbaijan published a statement saying that the We and Our Mountains monument was built in the town of Hankendi in Azerbaijan in 1967, and that is one of many examples of Azerbaijan's multicultural and national religious tolerance. Alas, Baku, as always, distorts the real history. The 10th province of Greater Armenia is in the center of attention, from the Grand the Great to modern European scholars. Here, archaeologists have just begun to unlock the secrets of history. Many monuments and ancient sites were still being released from the captivity of the earth. These programs are already spoken of in the past, but also with the hope. Perhaps one day they will continue what they started in Artsakh. The Artsakh State Council for Protection of Cultural Heritage warns that after the destruction of Surp Ambarsum Church in Berzor, Azerbaijan authorities are building a mosque in the place. The State Council for the Protection of Cultural Heritage of Artsakh announced in September 2022 the intention of the Azerbaijani administration to turn the St. Hambartsum Church into a mosque. Rand Kenkulian, better known by his nickname Udi Rand, was a virtuoso player on the oud. Let's remind that the oud is an oriental stringed instrument. His modern interpretations and performance style have had an indelible influence on subsequent generation of udahars. Kenkulian was born in 1901. In the first years of his life, together with his family, he often moved from one place to another, trying not to become a victim of the genocide against Armenians. The family eventually found refuge in Constantinople, where his teacher was one of the famous Armenian Udahars of the time. Although he made a living by playing in Turkey, it wasn't until he traveled to the United States, after which his fame increased. He sang in both Armenian and Turkish and had a wide audience among the Armenian, Turkish and Greek-speaking communities. Needless to say that for an Armenian musician, such popularity in Turkey was a special exception. Especially after not so long ago, the majority of Turkish Armenians were exterminated in their homeland. He continued to perform both locally and internationally. Also visiting Armenia in his old age. Rand Kenkulian died in 1978. His remains are buried in the Shishli Historical Armenian Cemetery in Constantinople. Turkish investigative journalist Uzay Bulut published an article on the Gatestone Institute website titled Turkish Textbooks, Turning History Upside Down. Bulut wrote, Turkish state authorities persecuted the indigenous peoples of Western Armenia, particularly the Pontic Greeks and Armenians. In the 20th century, Ottoman Turkey largely exterminated these peoples through genocide. Bulut clarified. However, the Turkish government calls the genocide unfounded claims of Greeks and Armenians in Turkish history textbooks the title used to be the Pontic problem and the 
Armenian question, but they have no begin change to unfounded claims of Pontus and unfounded claims of Armenians. Turkey also denies that Armenians, Assyrians, and Greeks are the indigenous peoples of the land where the Turks settled centuries later, occupied the land and exterminated the people already living there. It is said that young Turkish school children who have no idea about the real history of their country are brainwashed with lies about the regions of their country and inculcating hatred for the remnants who are now in a minority. It is not the fault of these children in Turkey that they don't know the true history of their country or the facts of genocide against minorities. They are fed the lie that Armenians and Greeks were minorities who lived happily in the Ottoman Empire for centuries until European powers incited them to rebel against their government. Conversely, the so-called minorities living in the Ottoman Empire have always been oppressed, enslaved, attacked, robbed, kidnapped, raped, and massacred, and the genocide committed against Armenians in 1915. These minorities were not even considered second-class citizens. They had no rights and were at the mercy of their cruel rulers. Bulut correctly characterized the education of Turkish school children as disinformation, deliberate, distortion, and historical revisionism. In an interview with Aravo Deyem, Anahit Hayatunyan presented the activities of the group of 40 Armenian American lawyers who founded a new structure to help protect the right of Armenian prisoners of war. The initiative is led by California Judge Kasia Abgarian, who coordinates the collection of facts about the captives and the filling of reports with international institutions. The UN Committee Against Torture has already reacted to this issue, criticizing the torture used by Azerbaijan against Armenian prisoners of war. This response is considered a major victory marking widespread recognition by the international community and demanding immediate action. The organization continues to work actively with the families of the captives, ensuring that international organizations are aware of the situation and facilitating the return of the captives to the Armenian side. Reports were also presented on the blockade of Artsakh, the deportation of Artsakh residents and their right to return, in which international experts called what happened is as a genocide. The National Council of Western Armenia supports all legal initiatives regarding the protection of the rights of Armenians, whether in Western Armenia or in Artsakh. But the most important thing is to apply to international courts as soon as possible. However, one of the fundamental points is to receive mandates from the people of Artsakh, not to separate the rights of the Armenians of Western Armenia and the Armenians of Artsakh, which contradicts all legal strategies. Dear viewers, one of the most important events that is coming soon is an exhibition entitled Mother Divinity, Mariam from Anahit, to be held on 21 September 2024 at the History Museum of Eastern Armenia, with the support of the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sport of the Republic of Armenia and the embassies of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The image of the mother goddess was formed in the Armenian highlands as early as in the Stone Age, expressing the continuity of the family. She was considered one of the creator deities of the universe, a symbol of fertility and material prosperity. After Christianity, her image was completed in mother of God, Maria Mastvatadzin, carrying the attributes and characteristics of the goddess Anahit. Temples were transformed into temples of the mother of God. The government of Western Armenia will join this historic and unique event through the conference dedicated to Anait, the symbol of wisdom. The meeting will be held in Yerevan on 15 September. Dear viewers, this was all for today. Goodbye.